Pokemon lovers, I'm trying out a new audio thing today. This might sound strange to you. Yeah, I'm trying out a new audio thing just because I thought why not and I wanted to and hello, what's up? Hello. Sorry about that. What is up? I just don't remember. Um, what am I doing? What's happening? Yes, it's Pokemon. It's rating of the Pokemon day. Woohoo! Today, we have a whole bunch of uh, water Pokemon uh, for some weird reason. They're always in, in bunches. So that's what's happening. My camera is not enjoying uh, focusing once again. So that's gonna be a great video. I can feel it. I can feel it in, in my butt. Today, we're starting out with number 366. Clam Pearl. Now Clam Pearl is very, very, very adorable and it is one of those Pokemon most people actually probably forgot about. Same for its evolutions. It's just not that memorable. But when I was looking at it, I was like, that is such an adorable little clam. So uh, yeah, very cute. Clam Pearl is a water Pokemon, like I mentioned before. It is a clam Pokemon. Uh, it looks like, like an oyster and it can produce pearls. I say pearls, but it can only produce one pearl in its entire life. And my theory is that that pearl that it creates in its life is its own head. So if you want to get that pearl, you gotta behead your clam pearl. I ain't... I'm not a fan. I'm not, not a fan of that image in my head. But you know, it just, uh, apparently. It's a thing. Well, actually, not. I made that up, but I'm pretty sure that is the case because where else would the pearl be? Its head is the pearl, right? Yeah. The pearls that Clam Pearl creates amplify psychic powers, although Clam Pearl is not a psychic Pokemon, it's just a water type, but things are confusing all the time. Maybe Clam Pearl's pearl is used on, on Persian's head. No one knows, but... The, that would mean that Persian has a dead Clam Pearl's head on its forehead. I doubt it. Clam Pearl is obviously based on Oyster. It has two different evolutions, which is kind of cool. I mean, we've seen it in Eevee. There's two different held items that Clam Pearl can have, and if you trade it with that item, it will evolve in either the one or the other. And I always really like that mechanism, although I completely forgot about Clam Pearl. Also, its Japanese name is Perlulu, which means pearl, and Lulu, which is something extraordinary or exceptional, and I am just a fan. Four out of five. The first evolution of Clam Pearl is Huntail, and Clam Pearl will evolve into Huntail when it gets traded holding a deep sea tooth. Now, Huntail is absolutely mortifying, not really enjoying that. Thing. Uh, it is a deep sea Pokemon and we all know what lives in the ocean. Fucking terrifying things, that's what. It's just slightly, slightly scary. It has a little fish on the end of its tail which it uses to uh, attract its prey. It will like make the little eye on its tail light up and another, another Pokemon will attack the tail and Huntel will be like, oh hell no, and eat them. Underwater stuff. Great. Huntail lives very, very deep in the ocean and it has really good eyesight, which makes it possible for it to see in like the dark and muddy, murky bottom of the ocean. And I don't know, maybe I forgot about it because whoever goes to the bottom of the ocean in Pokemon, not a lot of people. Pretty much only in Ruby and Sapphire does anyone ever do that. Which makes sense. They're Gen 3 Pokemon. Oh my god. Anyway, did you remember? I didn't remember. I'm. <laughs> Didn't remember. Huntail is based on uh, an eel, a deep sea eel, and its German name is Alabis, which is funny because um, it comes from Al, which is German and Dutch for eel and abyss. And I like the word abyss, it makes me happy. Three out of five though. Another evolution of Clam Pearl is Gorbis, which um, it evolves into when it gets traded holding a deep sea scale. Now, Gorbis is a bit of a weird one. Uh, it looks like it has this like shell bra that mermaids have, so it's supposed to kind of depict a mermaid, but it's really ugly. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for Gorbis shaming, but come on, that is not a mermaid. Come on, no. Pokemon <sighs> Sapphire says 
Although Gorbis is the very picture of elegance and beauty while swimming, it is also cruel. When it spots its prey, this Pokémon inserts its thin mouth into the prey's body and drains the prey of its body fluids. Nope. Hell no. No. No, no, no. No. Mm -mm. Gorbis is most likely based on the Snipe Eel, which is an eel that also has this weird pointy mouth and looks creepy as hell. I don't like eels. eels. Eels creep me out. I do. I don't like them. I wish they didn't exist, and especially the ones that suck fluids out of their preys. I mean, no. Gorbis's name comes from the word gore, as in to stab and abyss, and it's also apparently a play on the word gorgeous, which I don't see it. It's not gorgeous. It looks fucking creepy. So I give Gorbis also a three out of five. Not impressed. Forgot about it, and I'm. I'm sad I got reminded of its existence. Next up is number 369, Relicanth. Now, Relicanth, I think, is really, really cool. It is based on the Coelicanth, which I don't know if I say that right, but I'm gonna go with Coelicanth because it sounds cool. Coelicanth is a fish that is a living fossil. It has lived for over a hundred thousand years. People at some point thought it was extinct, but then they found it in like a submarine. And that's the same thing that happened to Relicanth. Now, Relicanth is always, for me at least, a very hard Pokemon to catch. I can't seem to really ever catch one, like, smoothly. It always takes forever. Another fun thing about Relicanth is that it is a kind of a walking fish. It will go on the bottom of the ocean and use its dorsal fins to walk around on the floor. Which, I don't know, I just the image of that I think is really adorable. Unlike the creepy ass eel Pokemon though, Relicanth is a nice guy. It has a toothless mouth and it will fill feed on tiny ass organisms that no one cares about anyway. And uh, it doesn't have teeth, so that's that's good. Like that. Relicanth is a water and rock type, which I always really like. You know, rock is weak to water, but it's a rock type, so it's cool as hell. Um, it is a rock type because it has scales that really resemble rocks. They're really sturdy, sturdy Pokemon. And um, I don't know, I just, I just like it. Pokemon Sun says, its form has remained the same for 100 million years. Oh, it was 100 million? I thought it was 100,000, oops. Its body is filled with fat so that it can withstand the water pressure of the deep sea. It's fatty. Mm. Relicanth's name comes from the word relic, which means something old that has um, survived the passage of time, which is very fitting. And of course, Quailicanth, Quailicanth, fuck. Koala Kanth, the fish it's based on. Give it a 5 out of 5, very cool design, very cool Pokemon, I like it. The last one for today is another water type, it just doesn't end. Number 370, Love Disk. Love Disk is one of those disposable Pokemon, like it doesn't really add anything to the game, it just exists, but you know, just let's give it some praise. It's heart-shaped and it's cute as hell, so why not ow? My arm. Honestly, Love Disk is kind of interesting. During the spring, they will group together on uh, low surfaces of water and color the water pink. That is adorable! It's, such, it's like a Valentine's Pokemon and it's almost Valentine's Day. How fitting. Two more weeks. It's not fitting. Oh well. Another really fun fact about um, Love Disk is that if it has a mate and it kisses that mate, it uses its like both their bodies to flutter in the sky like a butterfly. They fuse together and then they can fly. I don't even know. That is adorable. Who knew that Love Disk was really cute? Probably some some nine year old girls. Okay, get ready for this one. Pokemon Sun says if a love disc is left on its own, it becomes despondent, leaving itself open to attack. That is when Pelipper snatch them up. Why would you say that? Pokedex, come on. Another, I love the Sun and Moon Pokedex entry, so I'm gonna go with the Moon one as well. Loving couples have a soft spot for this Pokemon, so honeymoon hotels often release this Pokemon into their pools. I love it. It's just adorable. A funny thing about Love Disk is that it kind of looks like the tiny version of Alomomo Alomomola. Alomomola. Um, and it kind of should have evolved into that, but it didn't, and 
that's that's the end of that story. The shiny form of love disc is a golden color, which refers probably to having a heart of gold, which I think is very smart. Very clever way of thinking of shinies. The German name for love disc is Liebiscus, which first of all, just it comes from the German word Liebe, which is a word I love. It means love, but Liebe sounds way better than love, I, th I think at least. It comes from Liebe, discus, as in discus, and hibiscus, which is a plant. Also, Love Disc is based on the discus fish, which is one of them really flat, weird ass fish, and I really like that. And uh, the kissing fish, which is a fish that looks like it kisses other fish of its kind. Love Disc has surprised me this episode. I'm gonna give it a 4 out of 5. Hell yeah! You go, Love Disc. Bring the people together. That was it for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's video. I hope I can get the sound to sound right. The sound, I'm pointing to my mic, sound to sound right. And um, I will see you again next week. Let me know which one of the uh, Clam Pearl evolutions is your least... Do you think is least horrifying? I guess. And I wish you all a very good week. And I'll see you again next week with more rating of the Pokemon. And goodbye! Eels up inside ya, find it an entrance where they can. Eels up inside ya, find it an entrance where they can. Pour it through your tummy, through your mind, through your anus. Eels. Eels. Eels.